Greetings and welcome to this all new episode of Let's Create Something with Trap Code Tao. And uh, since, well, many of you were curious about how I made this, so I'm going to explain how I made this snaky scaled dragon tail looping thing. <laughs> so, no matter how it's called, it's going to be a little bit reminiscent of another tutorial that I put um, online six months ago. So, uh, we've created together this looping sphere stream and uh, it's going to be a little bit like that but we're going to push it uh, even further because in this one we repeated spheres but right now we're going to have like unproportionately scaled spheres and they're going to be angled in some specific way but all that is based uh, on this technique demonstrated by uh, him, Peter Norby, the creator of Trap Code Tao himself so there is this very nice tutorial in which he explained how to make this uh, looping flowing thing and uh, I'm always trying to find out other ways to uh, apply this technique on different ways uh, to create different things with that prior to starting this there are gonna be uh, two things that we're gonna reference so I'm gonna put the link in the description below so you don't have to uh, grab these manually and type them down yourself <coughs> but we're gonna use uh, this to create a circle, this expression here, and uh, Dan Ebert's uh, looping wiggle. So, uh, are you ready? Let's get in After Effects. Let's start. Step by step, we're going to create that. So, uh, Control N, we're going to create a new composition. Let's call this one uh, Tao uh, Scaled Dragon Tutorial. And let's hit Control Y to make a new solid on that going to be our tau solid so right here I've already got it down, typed down so tau the effect we can just double click on it to automatically apply that on our solid here and uh, let's create ourselves a light which we're going to use to emit our geometry so control alt shift L and uh, this is important we want to make sure that it's called tau all caps and that its light type is set to spot not point or ambient or parallel anything like that but spot and uh, radius perhaps is the only other value that we want to make sure that it's uh, set to its default 100 value and we're ready to hit OK our light uh, we're gonna make a small null hierarchy so we're gonna hit control alt shift Y and control alt shift Y now we have two nulls we're gonna make them 3D and uh, we're gonna connect our light to the first one and the first one to the second one and now the position here we're gonna make sure that it's zeroed out so all the axes values gotta be zero if we want to make sure that it starts off at the very center of our composition and uh, now that it's pretty obvious because we got a circle here it's in the right it's right in the middle of it we're gonna get rid of that circle by uh, unchecking the generated path here because we don't want to use that we're gonna use the light instead to create some kind of a circle but then we're gonna have much more control over it with expressions and uh, we're not gonna use any keyframes in this one we're gonna make it all procedurally which is very interesting all right and uh, let's fetch our circle expression at first so we're gonna copy that and uh, did we make sure that yeah we're gonna hit control alt O and that is the keyboard shortcut to get us in the auto orientation panel and we're gonna make sure that the orientation is set to off so using keyboard shortcut is uh, always getting us ahead imagine if you're doing some lawn work and uh, it's like difference between if you have to mow your lawn then you have to pick up the lawnmower in the shed then you mow your lawn then you go put it back and then you're gonna rake the leaves so you're gonna go in the shed take the, the rake uh, rake the leaves go there and put it back using keyboard shortcut it's like you mow the lawn then you make the lawnmower disappear but instead you make the rake appear in your hand and then you continue with your like you're winning some time the, the the second null we're gonna hit p to reveal its position and we're gonna alt click on the stopwatch here and we're gonna hit Control v to paste the code that we've previously copied into our clipboard here and we're gonna have a bunch of some patch of code here uh, there is a center here value so let's let's just see what it does by itself by default it's gonna toss it aside here so we're gonna center it back 
by making sure that the center value is once again here set to zero on all the axes and there we have it in the middle and uh, we've done this before that but let's once again understand what's happening here the uh, null here is going to revolve like that and uh, by default we're using 300 for the geometry creation so let's make a marker here actually by key, by hitting hit shift three uh, so each time we we hit three there we're gonna get here so uh, another thing that we can do here hit you and uh, we can click on this icon here to reveal uh, the path that's gonna that, that's being created by our expression here and uh, what uh, we're gonna let's <laughs> I'm trying to do different things at the same time let's get in uh, the tau effect and uh, at first let's look at our pass from tau light section and uh, we're we're gonna look at the option here it's called build up so if we set that up going back to frame zero it's gonna trace our geometry as we move forward through the the timeline and it's gonna end uh, it's gonna stop doing that at frame 300 because the default is 10 seconds here if if we were to type down 12 here it would use 12 seconds would give us a different result here and but it would go up until frame uh, 360 to uh, to uh, write the geometry. Let's, let's use that. Let's use that because 360 is like exactly the amount of degrees that we have in a circle. So perhaps in these uh, situations, we're, we're uh, getting it done more uh, in a more optimal mathematic way. I don't know. So um, half of that is a uh, six. So what we want to make sure in this particular technique is that what we're going to output of that is the the second half of this. So at frame 180, we're going to hit B here. It's going to be the first six seconds. It's going to be our start point for our output. And at 360, well, it's not going to be <coughs> the last frame we output, but it's going to be the last frame of... Uh, our animation and we want to make sure that what's on frame 180 and what's on frame 3 is exactly the same so try not to lose anybody here and um, so right now it's not the same we're going around and we're doing a bunch of circles here let's uh, let's let's make let's find out the numbers here so we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves some uh, custom expression controls so let's make a new null once again control alt shift y let's call this one settings so this is our tau rotation this is our tau main and this is our settings it's not connected to anything we're going to keep this separated and we're going to add some expression controls on it so go in the menu here effect menu expression control slider control and this we're going to call it radius and uh, let's uh, let, let's first of all lock it down here by clicking on the the, the, the lock here, and uh, we're gonna make sure that it stays there and it does not disappear as soon as we click some other layer. So uh, right in the rotation here, I'm gonna hit U, and uh, we're gonna connect the radius uh, value to what we've just created here to the value of the, what here the slider. So let's drag the pick whip the value 200 selected and uh, let's put it back to 300 because now we control the radius of our circle with that custom slider we just created for ourselves let's do the same for the angle so uh, let's try something else we've got we've got other options here in the expression control we've got a uh, an angle control so this is a a radial based uh, revolution based custom control so we're gonna here let's put 200 there the same value that we've got here and uh, we're gonna go and pick up the 200 here and uh, connect that with the pick whip here so now we've got another setting and that's controlling the amount of revolution that this makes as it goes along so let's find out how how, how is one like we want to make sure that these numbers here on frame 360, which is our last frame now, 
we want to make sure that it's got the same value as on the first one on frame zero here, but that's now it's not the case. So let's try that. Let's try down something. Uh, Three hundred and sixty divided by twelve. Three hundred and sixty divided by twelve, which is our duration, gives us thirty. So uh, that's thirty. It's gonna be half a revolution at half of the way and a full revolution at the end so we still don't have the same thing we've got to have at least two of these so we have got to multiply this by two and then we're going to start uh, having one full revolution halfway and it's going to trace back again another one and it's going to end up there at frame 360 so let's go at frame 359 and uh, hit here we'll hit n so we close down the work area here on frame uh, 180 we can hit b to make sure that it starts there so now it's got to have one issue here because of the gap but it's not going to be an issue later but we're going to start with that to uh, make our loop work so first thing i'm going to do to have something happen here with this thing and <laughs> continue to make it resemble the uh, dragon scale thing is we're going to we're going to push it in the distance so we're going to we don't want to use any keyframes. We're going to keep it all procedural, and uh, we're we're going to use the uh, offset animated s animation sequence thing from Tau. So let's go now that we've logged this. We we want to keep it there. Let's actually bring it on top here, and uh, now we're clicking on here, but we don't see our effect. So let's hit F3, and it's going to bring it down. We can bring it down here. So now we can see both at the same time and uh, let's get in the offset and let's open up the offset animation sequence let's activate it so first thing we, we might want to make sure that it's uh, the same as uh, this so we don't like have any trouble uh, syncing things up and uh, then we want to push it so three different ways that we like we can uh, not the rotation but here the position world position z or the uh, os uh, position z it's not gonna do the same thing it's not gonna if we like scrub the y here uh, we can notice that it brings it forward and back so let's let's try to use this os pause y and uh, let's all click on the stopwatch and let's type down time multiplied by one so uh, <laughs> now it means nothing so let's get here and let's create one more here so we're going to duplicate the radius and this one we're going to call it length so l e n g p h i love those g h t g h t words in english since i'm not an english person um and they are really hard to pronounce for me like the word depths especially when it's at the plural like depths what length all right so length uh, let's let's keep it here up here and uh, let's get back to our expression time multiplied by one so let's put this to one and let's grab the one here and let's link it to the length value here so now we can scrub this and we can push this <laughs> in the distance so that's approximately what we want to do now that we do that uh, it's going to be uh, some chord that's doing one revolution and we're might be going to start to we might be uh, starting to realize that we need more rotations on this so that's pretty handy that we have our angle control now we have like our if we had only one uh, rotation that, that's like the loop doesn't work but as soon as we have two it it kind of kind of loops so we j always want to keep multiplying by steps of 60 so we're gonna kind of create some another one of uh, those and this one I'm gonna call it multiplier and we're going to associate this with that so we're going to start it by uh, setting it to one so 
here get back to our rotation U and here on the second line here we're gonna uh, multiply uh, that whole thing that's happening here time multiply by the value on the angle control multiply by it by the value in uh, the multiplier so now it's multiplying one time it's the same but now this we can ram it to two and uh, to three and uh, as long as we put whole numbers in here we're gonna have something that no matter how screwed up it looks it's gonna well loop to some extent let's add more geometry to this 25 segments is not enough for uh, the amount of rotations that we now have so let's increase that and uh, that's what we're getting and uh, right now we don't like we know that we want to not extrude end guns but we want to repeat spheres because that's ultimately what's going going to be our scale things and uh, let's put at least eight sides so they look like circles and I think that right away we can get to the rendering section and uh, set the shader to smooth so we'll, we'll get smoothed spheres and uh, well we can start by uh, looking at this from another angle so right now we're looking facing our snake let's rotate the world <laughs> let's rotate uh, let's use the world transform y value so let's do this at 90 degrees so now we're gonna look at that from this angle so that means we can now come to our tau main here and we can uh, not on the x as we would normally do so because we've rotated the camera so on the z remember that's our z axis now we can uh, center it back so it looks more like this and now uh, it's pretty much gonna loop around So, doing this, we must keep in mind that we are limited with our length and, and all of it. So let's make it, now we can make it shorter, like, to get something back to uh, what looks more like some kind of snaky form. But now, we have to keep in mind that we are limited uh, to a few things. So, now it's not long enough, so it's not going to loop. So, right here at, at the first frame and at the last frame, it's you see that everything is in the same place but there's like something a whole chunk disappearing so we just need to make sure that uh, where while we're here it it fills up the whole screen so if we're uh, on a length of 216 let's let's verify so it's pretty handy I'm just hitting one and three on the keyboard here and it looks the same so we can even find our limit so here 167 oh we lose a chunk put a little more verify ah we don't lose a chunk so 207 is okay and uh, now we can make uh, we can test it out oh, oh here it's you can see it starting maybe you don't want maybe you don't want that so you would have to uh, put it on the side there but that would make it so that we have a gap now so we actually need to increase this a little bit more and find the perfect uh, equilibrium and now we're getting something uh, that loops so uh, let's look at that we need more more scales let's add the segments but as we do that we don't never we won't never fill the gaps here because you know what that means we need more rotations so let's increase the multiplier here and uh, don't put like a uh, non whole numbers or else it's not gonna loop correctly so if we put whole numbers it's gonna and now it's not this is another another thing we have to keep in mind that the amount of segments for some completely unexplained reason well there's obviously an explanation but it's completely unknown to me it's got to be uh, set to an uneven number so the segments if I put 180 no it, it's not everything is right uh, our multiplier the length everything but it's not looping let's put one eight, 181 and look at that so the number of segments is got to be uneven anything it is 222 no 
it's not looping 223 or 221 will so let's prove it yes 221 any number even if it's 845 it'll have many of them but it, it, it'll work and if it's 846 it'll never work not sure why so when you're scrubbing this sometimes you might find something that you like but just make sure that if it ends up being an even number you you put one more or decrease it so let's find our look let's get back to a fewer amounts and uh, like we can have them all aligned but we can have some kind of offsets that are more interesting so we, we can just experiment with that um let's try more more segments uh i mean more rotation bringing this up to eight nine so let's like screw around until we find something that is pretty much interesting now let's scale them up so um now this is the big <laughs> like, there, there might be some ways to do it different than that but this is the way i found to uh, have them oriented without getting crazy so first we're gonna stretch them uh, to make sure that they're tall on the z so first like that and uh, small on the x like that so at first what we're gonna get is they're gonna be angled in this kind of rotation if we not orient into the path it's gonna mess up everything so um we could try to like use the tau light and if we do that it's not gonna uh, rotate as we would expect like each individually because we're because we're using the oas pause y and not world y but we need to do so for for some other reason so how how do we angle this we can try here rotate and it does the same thing that the the light rotation let's do let's check one possibility uh, a little bit outside the box we're not going to animate any of those oas rotate x rotate y rotate c but look at that let's rotate on y and it it does the same the same like mess up as an angle but let's change the oas first and let's put position first so now uh -huh, huh, we can rotate these to be like some kind of a way that we wouldn't be able to do so differently so let's uh what was it like let's set them to 90 here One uh, ninety here, so they're facing, and uh, let's reduce their size on Y. So, getting something more like this, and then, then we can come here and. No, we can't. Actually, yeah, just on the on the Y. So, <laughs> so that's the combination. Now, it works as expected so there might be other combination but the one i ended up with and i'm i had many dead ends with it and uh, this is how i ended up doing it so position os first set to position os rotate x to 90 and then you come here and the rotate y only or you can if you want to type person that you want to leave them all to zero here and change it here just the Y here let's change it so we can angle those scales and get this kind of a pattern that we want and we can even add some uh, rotation here on on the Z here if we want them slightly skewed on on the side here but let's keep it like that so that's that's how I ended up doing this so now this is still looping it's going forward pretty straightforward in fact and uh, before we start modeling it some other way let's let's uh, look let's talk about the looks so um, at first let's make those red 
So let's get to our light here and uh, right here. I can make it some kind of a paint car paint red, something like that. It's gonna look like this, but what I like to do is uh, by default the value here in the let's close this down, close this down. So in the material and lighting here, let's s click on here and let's set that to the, the mid gray, like 128, 128, 128. So here we start with a neutral color on the base here and the light that it's using from the light is gonna shade its color. So that's how I like to do it. You might like it totally different way, but uh, basically, what we can do if we want to have this some kind of a reflection in it and have this some kind of a I don't know some kind of a plasticky look like I've made in my example let's get in, in the material and lighting I'm gonna use one of those uh, image based lighting that's uh, built in so let's select the dark industrial this one is nice to have like this re really cool reflective kind of look dark dark it's gonna be dark so by default, when we use this, we uh, always, most often, need to crank up the diffuse trend really high. And then we, we get that. So if we want less reflection, we can simply remove it from here, like totally. But what I like to do, just to remove the reflection, is I like to keep it high here. But let's get in this setting here called a Fresnel. And uh, what the Fresnel does, as I can understand it, is... Uh, Look, if I set it to zero, it's all, all reflective, like the same amount of reflection goes on any uh, area of the surface here of our piece of geometry. So, so if I increase the Fresnel, it's gonna like make it, it's gonna tone it down, but there are some parts that are gonna be uh, still very uh, apparent depending on if it's like facing the camera or I if we're looking at, at it from from the side uh, of the camera. So pretty uh, useful to, like instead of putting the reflection reflection strength to zero and uh, having the Fresnel like, or putting a really small, like if I put a really small here, all those lines like are really there, but uh, Let's adjust that with the the Fresnel, and we, we can get something more. We can get something nicer. And uh, let's talk about this now. Yeah, the rendering. Um, right now, especially when we're using reflections, the multi sample here, we want either to boost it to get more details in it, but ultimately. Uh, and this you can be doing it only at the end, but the super sample kind of makes it more smooth with the reflections overall. So when you're working with uh, image-based lighting, uh, as a general rule, we can say that we might end up using the super sample rendering method. So that's about that being said. Um, let's get in our settings and let's reduce the radius <laughs> just because we can do so. And um, let's add some lights. So uh, Control Alt Shift L. But those are not going to be Tau lights. They're going to be Tau Lumi lights. Let's write this, type this down all in caps here. And uh, let's make them point lights. So not spots for those, but points. And let's hit OK. So by default, it's that. Let's come in our Tau effect, and uh, we can make those Tau lights really Tau's <laughs> lights, uh, Lumis, by uh, clicking on here. Right now they're being uh, they're being used just as normal lights, but if we click here we get more detail. In this kind of situation I might end up like, I've called them Tau Lumis, but they could be just called lights here. But if they're called lights here, then I'm gonna uh, check this in and uh, gonna it's not gonna change any anything 
but we've got a light. Ah, so let's see. That's something that I didn't understand it this way before. So the light, if I call it Tau Lumi, I'm still gonna have a, a patch even, it's still gonna not react the same way as a light, even if it's not checked. Ah, so that's, so that's weird. Well, all right. So uh, based around that, I think that what I use was a Tao Lumi, not Lemmy, but Lumi. But then, if it's checked in or not checked in, it's one more difference. So I ended up calling it Tau Lumi, but not checking it as a Tau Lumi to get the in between, I guess. But uh, that's just because I want to bring this down here and have some kind of a, a backlight coming from uh, behind the object and from the side here. And uh, I'm going to duplicate that and we can make another one on the top here. And let's have it undulate like as in a snaky form. So uh, I'm going to save that. And um, let's see if we can get more scales in that. Because now that we've set this up, if we look at frame one, frame, oh, we lose one piece here. We need more. We need more length. So it's pretty easy for us to test different things now. We can increase that. We can increase the amount of revolution in our multiplier, which I think this is much nicer than the other one. So let's let's stick around with that and then mess around with the amount of uh, segments. See the difference between that and that? It's subtle, but it's. I think this one is nicer. So maybe you think the other one. It's all about. Uh, like making those tweaks and if you like it keep it and continue and uh, if it doesn't feel right well it's not right so undo and do something else <laughs> so um and keep in mind that this got to be uh, not a uh, an even number but an odd number was that how i said it before anyway if it's an even number it doesn't work and if it's an odd number it it works you gotta keep it odd, man. So now we have that. Let's create an undulating pattern with this. And now uh, let's do it. Like let's trace a pattern that's gonna be static at first. So two different things that we're gonna do. We're gonna make this not a straight tube. We're going to make it something undulated, but it's going to be static and move. And then we're going to add some motion in that undulation. So two different things we're going to do. Let's get back in our position for the light right here where we have uh, no, no, uh, so yeah, I'm clicking here because I <laughs> want to get the name back. So, um, Yeah, this, this one here, the position. Let's add a wiggle on this. So um, let's get to Dan Ebert's expression here. It's really precious patch of code. We're going to select it, Control c to copy it. And let's get back in here and I'll click on the uh, Tao main uh, position. And we're going to paste the code. So it's going to mess up everything by default. We want We want to first define one thing really important our loop time is going to be six because we use 12 as a uh, generation and this number always has to be half of what we're going to be using because it's going to be looping up to this point and it's going to be doing the same thing uh, down here again so before we do anything and one thing that when practice that we can uh, just do if we want to make sure that it's always in sync with our paths from Tau Light is this here it's 12 we can say that and I hope it's not gonna mess everything up and I hope it works fine but uh, we can say that this loop time is equal 
uh, the duration of uh, this, of our light, divided by 2. So divided front slash 2, divided by 2. So if we change it here, then it's going to change it accordingly. But you have to like wrap your head around understanding these things at least to a certain level if you want to be able to change stuff easily and understand what you mess up when you mess up. So um, right now it uh, it it kind of kind of wobbles a little bit and uh, it goes there undulating as it uh, travels. So let's change that and let's make ourselves some more settings. So right now we have all this that's related to what we've been doing up to this point and we're going to add more because we have our wiggle here where is uh, our yeah here in our main so now it's affecting all three axes first we want to constrain it to only the y axis because it's moving around like it's wobbling in the z x and y direction we want just to make it wobble like up and down so the y so if we want to do that uh, here it's really the, the line of code that's doing the action so if we go right at the beginning of this line here so right before the word linear we're gonna add in a bracket and uh, it's gonna be a three value thing so the first value is gonna be this and I'm just gonna drag it to the first value no matter what's in there add a comma the second value well it's gonna be this the wiggle but here we gotta go at the end and open the bracket and type one to uh, define it as the second value of this uh, array and then we can add another comma and uh, we can simply point to uh, the z value for this so x and z are not using the wiggle y is using the wiggle so now we get something that makes a little bit more sense with what we want to do if we want to just have it undulate in one direction so now we're gonna change these numbers here to freck and amp but freck what the freck we want to perhaps add a way to uh, manually define the, the the seed random here if we want to better control things so we ha we've got three numbers here that we can add in our custom control so let's duplicate the radius just so we get one new and we're gonna call that um, pause wiggle freck and let's duplicate it control D and this one is gonna be pause wiggle amp and let's duplicate it and this is gonna be pause wiggle seed so right now we can put the same numbers that we have here so we can understand what's happening and not get crazy so frequency 1 position uh, amp uh, 110 and uh, seed random now that I'm arbitrarily put there is 4 but it can be any number so let's connect those I'm gonna go pick up the 4 here and did you know that anywhere you click in the text and that goes for any software I think if you hit shift and hold down shift and hit the right or the left arrow it will select the thing you might already probably know this what I'm saying so let's connect the 4 to that and let's uh, select the one here and let's uh, link it up with our frequency and let's select the 110 here and let's link it up with our amplitude so the amplitude is how high and how low it will go and the uh, wiggle and the frequency is how often it's gonna do that so right now it's doing it once per second let's half it down so divide that by two and uh, right now uh, we're getting a more uh, we're getting a more uh, natural undulation here as here it looks a little bit too messed up so right now at 0.5 we can increase the amplitude maybe so that's what we're gonna get and then if we go forward we can see how it how it goes there and we might even bring this down even further down so we've got something more of this kind of a pattern so really and this wiggle seeds seem pretty regular like it's got a frequency that 
seems to be doing uh, because we got a low frequency anyway so we can change the we can change the seed uh, random here to get like browse between different results based on the same value here so I like number 39 right now it's I don't know it might be the one that's great for us might not be but here let's keep it like that so what we've got now is uh, something that's uh, not moving in terms of undulation it's go it's just going straight but it's not a straight line shape anymore but let's undulate that motion so we might get some trouble if we try to do it this way and we're probably not going to do that this way so there is the offset here that we can come in and check at zero and then bring it at 100 here and uh, if we would check the position instead and like it's not gonna work because we're using a different type of technique so we want to leave the offset animation out, out of this entirely um, or rather at zero all the time and not even worry about anything like that's checked here uh, but since we're using the asset animation sequence and uh, we still have the OAS position Y that we didn't use before. So we're gonna use it to wiggle, uh, to add uh, one more wiggle. So let's grab these because we're gonna make three more and let's duplicate that, bring them down there. And let's call those, instead of uh, position wiggle, uh, they're gonna be, they're gonna be motion wiggle motion wiggle M oh did I change that motion wiggle seed and uh, let's bring them entirely down here you can get rid of the twos so now we got the same value let's try punch them in right in the uh, right in the asset animation uh, sequence OAS world position Y. So let's alt click and uh, let's paste because we still have in our clipboard the Danibert loop code. And um, let's make sure that we've got some way of having a seed random to that. So the seed random is actually going to be the motion wiggle seed. I can close down the parentheses. And the frequency is actually going to be the moyon, the motion wiggle amp. So let's uh, fix that typo there. And uh, the amplitude, well, it's going to be uh, the motion wiggle amplitude. And this is not going to be the amplitude. I made an error. It's going to be the frequency. All right can just type it down here so right now it's doing it's got the same C then it's like got the same values as the one we're using for uh, for the other thing so how, how will that end up in something like that So let's make the make out try to make out the difference between both. So now, like, let's get back to uh, our Tao main, and if we click here on the equal sign here, we can disable the expression that we use to make the uh, non the, the static undulation, like its general shape, base shape. So if we turn it entirely off, now we have just the the motion of. Uh, so we're getting back like to the, the same exact exact thing. Actually, we we might like output something that completely uh, use just just that just the second wiggle. But if we m mix both, like let's look at like this one is not active and hit U here, the world position Y. So 
if I do that, it's completely straight. If I only have this active, it's gonna be, it's gonna have a, a static undulation on it. If I only activate this one, it's gonna have a uh, motion undulation. But if we merge both, we're gonna have a more uh, random form. And now it's not like that random because we have the exact same value and even the exact the exact same wiggle seed. So let's first start to change the wiggle seed for that. And uh, we can like make it go a little bit faster for that and uh, maybe increment that. So here is several combination to test out and see what what will end up uh, having as an animation. Oh, I like this. I like this, but uh, it's a little bit uh, too heavy. Let's decrease. Oh, we have to make sure that this loop thing is set to six or else it's not gonna work fine of course it's very important not to forget that so now we can uh, and I'm not sure why that I'm not seeing it update live ah because I've I've made a keyframe all right this all right so this is our motion undulation all by itself and this is it combined with with our our static uh, evolution So a little bit more randomness in there if we mix both together. And uh, then we can have one smaller and one bigger, one slower, one faster. And doing that will uh, we'll bring in a little bit more uh, randomness in there. So we have something like that. All right, that's pretty cool. And uh, what can we do if we want to make something that looks like that? Uh, well, we can add some normal uh, normal mapping. So here is, uh, if I look in this, I've got these patterns here that I got from somewhere random on the net. So uh, let's try, let's try that. It seems that it's styleable, so let's bring it in here and uh, these are nor normal maps uh, texture they, 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 u they use these colors to uh, simulate uh, some displacement in the geometry that will be helpful to make it a more intricate texture let's just see what it does we can bring it down here we don't need it to be active here so we're gonna shut it off and this can be applied by going in the texture. Uh, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put those in the the, the files, but uh, I'm not the author of them, so I'm not responsible if you use them commercially. Right now it's uh, it's okay because it's uh, this is a tutorial. It's uh, an ac academic situation. I'm not profiting on it, so I think it's okay um, but let's uh, let's get in the not in the color texture but let's get in the normal map and let's apply that so that's what we're getting uh, and it it's pretty cool because it reacts with the light so uh, it's gonna be applied uh, on our each of our scales there and of course we can make it less less intense 
by decreasing this here. So if we bring this like something around 30, it'll look a little bit, sorry there, it's, it's gonna look a little bit nicer, maybe even like there. At eight, I think it looks pretty fine. And uh, it's maybe gonna be a little bit harder to uh, process now. Uh, we've got that, but here is uh, something uh, else that you can do to uh, make it more detailed and look at how the reflections uh, working on that. It's pretty cool. And uh, one more thing that we can do is like set up some fractal displacement over all that. Like it's already got this weird motion there. If we increase the amplitude now, we can mess it up in some sort of uh, 70s psychedelic take too much acid way. So let's, um, I don't know if we ju just want to get a little small bump in all this, we can like increase the odd scale and put a very small amplitude. Will that even work at all? Bring the frequency like to the roof and bring that like to a very small amount. And uh, when I say very small, I mean close to zero, not very negative. And you might like get more detail. Like this is without the fractal, and this is with. There's some like darker parts now. Um, the complexity, crank this up more. But once again, this will be effective more if we uh, have more than eight segments, because the fractal is getting apply on that. So let's double that. We're already. Uh, so if we want a small, really small pattern. We had to get the amount of sides very high, but this is might be like well, the arc scale. Now we can bring this now six, and um, let's make it a little bit, a little bit more. So we can get like more organic type of. Uh, let's increase the frequency even more, and let's put that down to two. Like we can get more organic stuff over the uh, the normal uh, mapping that we've applied on our geometry and we can like change this uh, individual I, we can only apply this on the z i think yeah and we'll lose uh, much of what is problematic so let's turn it off and turn it on so even even more like organic -y, organic -iness, <laughs> organic geekness, more details. And uh, of course, we can like size down the, the texture, the normal, works as exactly as the texture we would put in there if we had one. In fact, it I would like it to be separate because sometimes you want to scale the normal map, but you want to not scale the texture like you want to have both of those independent so here, here is another way that you can make those seem uh, more uh, smaller little bump on on the scale but there are many interesting ways we can add more details let's keep that a one let's keep that a one um like if we want to get the point of those if you want to make more uh, variations on the, the the scales also we let, let's get on our light here and if we make something that loops here like our color let's go forward let's go let's make a little like let's go forward uh, five frames and let's make like a slightly different red and uh, let's go forward once again Let's make it a slightly different red. And uh, let's keep it at three for the moment, but you can select them all, right click and toggle hold and make that loop. So I'll click on the stopwatch and get in the little contextual menu here with the arrow icon and in the properties, loop out type cycle. So uh, now we're at the beginning and uh, we need that to be a multiple of uh, 180. So uh, right now it's uh, 
10. It's got to work. I think so. Let's add uh, two more. Let's make it 20. And then I'm going to make it this one. Once again, just a little bit different. So when we come back here, we have some that are uh, more bright and red, some that are less. And uh, this pattern here, we can like crunch those those uh, keyframes here. So if we select them all, and uh, now we've got to keep a, keep it a multiple of ten or something that fits with one hundred and eighty. So hold all, take the last one and drag this. It's gonna proportionally like scale all of this down, and maybe in this situation we're gonna get a more uh, interesting pattern out of out of this, more randomness that we want. And uh, yet again, if we want to have the tip of this, I don't know why, but what if the, the animal we're making, the tip of his scale are yellow? Like it's one of his characteristics, it's one of the features we've got to put in there. So let's create ourselves a new comp, a uh, new solid first, control Y. Let's make it uh, 500 by 500. And let's call this texture and hit OK. And we're going to hit Control Shift C and we're going to leave all the attributes and we're going to double click on there and let's make some basic uh, color thing. So we're going to keep the same red that we've put on here. So uh, it's kind of based off this, this red here. So let's uh, pick this number up here. Let's copy that in the clipboard and uh, let's get an our texture and uh, let's hit control shift y so we can get in this solids settings and we're going to change its color to be exact the first red in our PMRK but that uh, we'll have to do something with the colors there so that is uh, what we get but we don't have it applied yet so Let's go in the uh, textures and on the color texture, let's add the uh, texture comp there. So all of it becomes red again. Now let's let's make this work differently. So all this variation, now the red is getting it from the texture. So we want this to become some neutral color. So let's bring them all different kinds of grays instead. So let's bring this here and then now let's, we're not uh, like entirely direct directly on it so we can get back at 20 and stretch them back here again if we want to be able to go directly on them but either way we can uh, we can double click on on that so let's make them different different uh op different uh, intensity of grays there so now we get the variations but we're getting the color from the texture without any uh, any uh, interference from the, the color of the light or the color the general color here that is here we can always come up and uh, like tone everything down or uh, brighten everything up so let's keep it this at mid gray let's keep our variations here on grayscale and uh, the texture here is going to be red so we still got different kinds of red but uh, let's 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 make another let's duplicate that and uh, let's make it yellow and uh, let's make it a circle mask around it so let's select our elli ellipse tool and double click on it and there we've got some kind of circle and uh, here we're gonna hit S and we're simply gonna like place our things. So let's get, look at this and once again, get back here. And there, it's right at the center. So we can like, maybe that's uh, that's okay. It's got this uh, half moon here on each scale, but uh, let's place it at the tip at first. So let's see how, where where is what. So let's try to bring it near the corner here 
and uh, let's hit control alt front slash to see where it is and now we don't see it so let's uh, bring it down here get back here and uh, it seems to be near the tip so see I don't know exactly what I'm doing but almost <laughs> I I can place it there and I see that it's not anymore near the tip but uh, let's let's try something we can keep it at the center so let's reset that and let's reset that so it's right there but what if we manually come here and we texture offset let's go and place it so this dot here is going to be on the tip so we're going to find the right numbers to bring it up there oops too far oh right there it seems to be pretty accurate in terms of what I don't know but there is our circle it's on the tip I need to put it more uh, uh, no this got to be the other way around so 22 something like that like look at that it's got some intricacies that we're all happy to have but what's going on are there parts where it's not looping anymore let's see let's bring that zero and zero hmm I think that it's it's messing up our normal that's why I would like I would like those to be kind of uh, I would like those to be separate but uh, no worries let's place it like we knew that if we bring this around here then we can kinda kinda manually place it where we want it without getting any or it's just because anyway is good and uh, maybe we want to make sure it's entirely in does that Insert there, yeah. <laughs> it looks like some nails, kind of eerie how it makes it look. That's cool. And uh, we can like put some fast blur on this if we just want it to be some like grading. Like, let's put maximum fast blur on there, and uh, let's uh, I don't know. Let's scale this back up and let's leave it like that. Let's look at that. Oh, sh it's it's taken all all the all the area. So let's do that then. And now we can get like something more of that nature if that's what you're looking for. smaller more blur so something like that it was was I was initially going for so that's uh, I'm getting a hard time to get my preview now so yeah that's pretty awesome and we seem to be getting some kind of some issues with the uh, I think it's the it's the fractal noise Let's remove our fractal and see if it's that fractal displacement. So, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of creating these, but I might have not been very careful while I was changing those values here, so I might be somewhere in between responsible and not responsible. So let's reduce that. Let's increase that. Uh, it's pretty hard on there. Yeah, if we smooth, smooth the normals, smooth it. Uh, let's get back to what we had at first. So something. 
something like that and let's move the normals and that might be what fixes it guys I'm not sure I'm not sure that I understand what's happening now but it seems to be working in our favor is it completely like shutting down the fractal or not it's kind of toning it down but we're keeping the details so yeah uh, and maybe that's not a good idea and let's try to keep it let's try to let's try to put another kind of a big a big one a big big uh, like <laughs> not big in terms of that but uh, let's bring the complex p back to two and uh, the oct scale let's bring it down to one and that's pretty abstract and uh, let's bring it down to 0.7 and let's bring that down and let's bring the frequency down so here are some other possibilities here look at that that might be a better way to use the the fractal displacement in this rather than use it to to try to make a small bump but yet again that thing if we evolute it on the y what do, what will it make oh that's gonna be weird or on the z even better let's try to make a keyframe here on offset z and let's go to tree and let's make uh, I don't know 1200 oh and then and then we had to go to the seamless loop generation thing and set the end frame and it's gonna mess up stuff yeah that's what I was afraid of so uh, I'm not sure if that's because like this number here is gotta be some magic number is it too high? Let's increase that. All right. We need to get some frequency to some point and reduce that. So pretty, pretty interesting that we'll, okay, uh, we need to make the offset Z match and now it's not enough, so bring this more, it to match, all right, I think this is enough, see there's no fuck ups, I think. There's no screw up, I think, this time. So now I have something like that. It's going to make it more organic. And uh, we might try to have it the other way around. So let's right click and keyframe assistant time reverse those keyframes. So that what it's going to do to have the fractal work on the other way around. <laughs> I don't know. Pretty interesting or maybe not or maybe everyone's tired of seeing those fractal displacements they look all the same let's keep it like to a small amount or let's see what we have through the segments this this would be interesting i would like to be able to mess around with this more but this will uh, totally like put our looping off the track i think yeah because the 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 segments are not like the, the on the second pass the the fractal is gonna be different anyway for some reason it's gotta be set to world if we use this uh, this technique this specific specific technique so keep that in mind but 
there's always some ways of having a little bit more organicness or organic um, motion wise if we add some fractal displacement over all that and uh, are we done one last thing one last thing just for uh, one of my buddies Stefan he wanted me to make two tutorials at the same time so the previous tutorial were about uh, the uh, wireframe look let's let's see this this is something that might be something you want to do something like it's useful to know how to take something with one look and uh, quickly make it into another look sometimes it doesn't work like the way you set up things and you try to make a different look a different way it, it will create some issues but let's see how we I would uh, bring this to the to the wireframe look so, so let's duplicate that and uh, first of all I would I wouldn't use any normal mapping so I can just remove that from there and even if it's selected it's gonna like not be there and uh, the texture also wouldn't be something I use so we can remove that and oh look at that pretty nice and uh, what I would go about and do at first is uh, try to go to a, a rendering and uh, just try to see what we have here oh it looks like that that's cool and uh, now I would notice that I need to remove the amount of uh, sides to get less lines in here and have bigger triangle triangulations so let's set them back to and now you can see through like it's all they, they, they go on top of each other yeah, so let's see instead of smooth we can set that to density and uh, instead of setting that to wireframe we'll set it back to fill but here on the second pass we'll set the wireframe so it's gonna be on top but uh, we're still gonna have some density and uh, stuff are gonna be hidden by stuff <laughs> and uh, if we want to keep it this way and still see through all we we have this depth buff here that we can set back but once again we want to make it not uh, all that messy and uh, now no matter what we've set our lights to be in terms of color we can always get back to the material and lighting here and make this very uh, dark color I mean not all entirely black but just close to it and uh, in the rendering section here the wireframe SP color here we can change that to our super retro green color something like that and we're, we're getting close to I mean now we still have the reflection in it which is some kind of nice aspect to it but uh, I think I wouldn't use the uh, or I would it's nice let's rotate the environment to see if we can get more uh, different yeah different like little streams in there it's pretty cool so that's ultimately how I, I would make it and if you don't like to have these triangulations uh, you can always make it quads to get rid of the diagonal lines in there so maybe that's more of the kind of look that you're after in terms of wire framey stuff and the sides always remember like you want less detail you punch this number now down you want more you ra raise it up like just like that I think they look nice when they are triangulated these these ones and uh, let's see 12 which was great and uh, one last thing uh, yeah the um, the blending mode we could set that to add and explore more intricate ways of representing that and uh, we could also go in the um, opacity now that add is up and now we can tone this down so I'm getting all kinds of weird weird stuff here let's shut off the reflection so yeah the, the light is actually 
affecting it right now. Something here that's happening that's making it. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's these are our Tao Lumis. Let's get rid of those. Yeah, what I think of that first. So now that we're on the add setting, it kind of is uh, still hidden by everything, but with the add, we have more. Uh, control over the close if we decide to put some on top of that afterwards so uh, now where is that in the rendering so off or normal or add now and uh, we might want to darken everything down right if we set that to add so we get lines that are on top of each other that will blend in and those will be the brighter parts on this and if we go on top of all that and add an adjustment layer and we can set up a basic after effects glow in the stylize and uh, have that like narrower and uh, perhaps have a combination of two different glows if that's something that you like to do like have one really narrow and really uh, the other one that is really uh, more of a, an area glow thing something like that I don't know you you are the one to judge so I think it does look pretty pretty interesting that way so very much uh, endless possibilities of uh, screwing around with this and uh, making different kind of stuff so I'd like with, to see what you can come up with using that uh, let's compare one more time if it was uh, normal and uh, brighter I think it's a little bit more rich but sometimes like there are parts that are too blown off when you set it on add so you might set it on uh, on normal in the end and uh, this if you want to increase the of course the wireframe width and I don't think that the density thing affects the second pass like it affects if we use the density as uh, our main uh, coloration, but now it seems like uh, it doesn't affect anything at all that's happening on our with it. Is oh, it, it 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 does it does. Oh yeah, here I I've set it down to eight, and it seems that we even got more, kind of more details in the way it glows. And of course, you might, if we're going in the glows like that, and oh, it's already that nice, and we're still in eight bit. I'm sure it's gonna be pretty blown off when I'm gonna set that to thirty two. So it's not even loading right. So there are some times like that <laughs> we're get, we're gonna keep it at, at eight in this in this case. All right. So uh, I think it's time that I uh, I stop recording now. And uh, well, I'm probably gonna let you decide what's gonna be the next subject for the next tutorial. And uh, well. It's been great having you, and uh, let's hope we can uh, make some more things together next time around. So thank you very much for watching, and as always, see you next time.